Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is John Hammond coming back at you with another video for the Tic Tac Toe series um, in C++ programming. So I haven't touched this in a little bit of time, and I wanted to wipe the dust off because I did intend on creating this next video, but honestly, it just slipped through the cracks in time. Um, so, so far we've got a working game of tic-tac-toe where we can let the player play and figure out if the player has won, but we have not yet created the computer or the enemy, like, AI that we're working with. So, in this video, I want to create a pretty stupid AI that will just, at random, pick a spot in the grid, and then later on we can make a much more smart AI or uh, more intelligent computer enemy or player uh, to... Okay, look ahead to see what the player has played, and then go ahead and block moves or do something more advantageous to let that computer player win. Um, but for now, let's just do the simple basic one of a random uh, computer player turn. So let's create a new function for that. I'm going to call this computer player turn. Um, it's not going to return anything, so the return type will be void. I'm still going to be inside this game class, and that should just be fine for us. We can keep that in our main loop when we're working with it. But we do want to have a computer player turn. So if we're doing this at random, we're going to want to use the crand function. And uh, let's go ahead and get that, because that's in a specific module or a library we need to include. And that should be, from what I know, the standard lib.h. Um, I guess we can print out what that will return for us to make sure that it actually happens. Um, let's go ahead and get a computer choice variable, and that will be the number on the grid that they're actually going to uh, choose as their turn. So that's going to have to be in between numbers 1 and 9, right? Because we have 1 through 9 available places on the grid to, to choose from. So if we're going to use this random function, it'll return a completely random number, but we want to cap it at 9 and make sure the start is at 1. So the way we can do this is by using the modulus operator and modding it to 9. So that way, no matter what it seems to be, it'll be wrapped around over and over and over again until it's only uh, 9 or less. If, it, if there is a remainder of 9, um, or it's divisible by 9, uh, how the modulus operator works, that'll become a 0. So we'll actually get number 0 through 8. 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. But we want 1 through 9, so we'll just add on a 1 at the very end here. So now we'll have numbers 1 through 9. That's how we can get our max and min set up just like that. And let's go ahead and actually just display that out on the screen. Just make sure where our ran function works and we're getting it from the right library because I want to double check on that. So um, computer chose percent %d as their turn. Whatever. And then let's just put the computer choice in there make sure this actually executes in computer player turn. Don't need any arguments there, but let's go ahead and make this uh, make clean to remove that. Make to compile it and run, and now we can main computer player chooses two as their turn. Okay, so that works just fine. Let's play something, whatever. So the computer is choosing all these places, but we're not actually putting something there. So let's go ahead and make sure they actually do uh, update the grid with their choice. And we're doing this with a random function, right? And we don't know for sure whether or not we've actually chosen a spot that has already been used before, either the computer's turn or the player's turn. So we actually have to keep trying to figure out an, a place to play our move um, and determining whether or not we actually can place our move there. So we'll do that inside of a while loop. We'll just use a while true because we'll keep looping over and over and over again to keep trying to figure out a new random place to play our move uh, if another spot is taken. So w since we have this computer choice, we can use that trick we've been doing to get the row and column in the game or on the grid. That was computer choice minus one, because that's zero based, divisible by three for the row, and column minus one mod three for the column. Perfect. Okay, so now we can use that to get what the actual character is at that grid position with that row and column, determining that in that kind of character matrix we've been using, the two-dimensional array of just grid, and that way we can determine if this grid position variable, it's a character, is going to be either an X or an O. And if it is, then we know, okay, we can't actually move into this spot. 
So if group position is equal to an X, or two pipe symbols there, or group position is equal to an O, we will continue. We'll keep iterating. We'll try another location because we can't sit there. We can't place our move. Group position is already taken. So let's try another random number. Okay. And if it's not, then we can go ahead and place it. So that means we can say grid, row, and column will be set to the enemy character. So in this case, the O, because uh, the computer player is playing as O's. And then we'll break out of our loop. And then we can tell, let's print out to the screen, computer will play at percent D, new line, and then let's just put the computer choice right there. Cool. Okay. That should be everything we need for that function, but let's clean up um, this generate grid and the, our kind of main loop here now, because um, let's show grid and check for wins just the very, very beginning which I guess we don't really need to do. But since we have two players playing now, we want to ask for our turn and then show the grid and check for wins. And then after the player, the computer enemy, the, com the enemy player has made their move, we'll show the grid and then we'll check if they won. So kind of... A little duplicate stuff here, but after each player has their turn, you want to see how it changed the game and whether or not they won. So there's nothing wrong with us calling those functions again. Let's see how this works. Make clean, make, nope, hopefully there are no errors. Looks like it compiles just fine. Let's run main. Where would you like to play? I'll play at 5. Cool. The computer will play at 2. And so I've placed my move. He's placed his at 2. Where would you like to play? Well, let's move it to 4. Computer will play at 8, so he's down there now. And I'll move into 6, and the way, that way I've won. Okay, maybe we don't need to show the grid after I have uh, played, or because that way, since the computer player will move after, um, we don't want to have to duplicate that portrayal of the grid. I guess we don't have to do that. Um, let's move it at 5 here. Player will play at 2. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know what? I noticed just now in our grid display, we're not actually giving that... Uh, <laughs> we're not actually printing out the first uh, loop here. Like the side wall. I totally didn't say that. <laughs> Sorry. That, that probably didn't make much sense. But, okay. So now we'll just move over our our top half because I didn't even realize that I wasn't displaying that side. I was just trusting the... Okay, cool. Now we have a... Oh, I guess I don't need a space following that. I'm just trying to protect to perfect the uh, display that we have here. Okay, cool. So now we actually have a grid, and the the leftmost wall there, the leftmost side, is actually displayed. Sure, whatever. There's our tic-tac-toe grid, and now the game works just fine. The computer will play at two. Um, I can't play there, so I'll play at three. Um, player computer player played at eight, so I'm gonna take five because I don't want him to win. He moved to six. Let's go to nine, and then we win. Perfect. It's probably unlikely that the computer player will win at this point um, because he's playing at random. So that makes the game pretty easy. Um, but it maybe that's at least uh, a simulated tic-tac-toe game where there's an enemy player or something, someone else that's making turns. So in the next video, we'll get into a smarter uh, AI. Uh, probably looking at the same logic that we're using to check for whether or not a, the, a player has won, because we can use that, that loop, to determine where another smart move might be for the computer player. So, sweet. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Wasn't a whole lot of code in this video, just that simple function to have the computer player turn, and I didn't realize we had...
didn't have the left side of the grid here, so we corrected that. But thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, if you are, hey, please like the video. Maybe leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. What else I can do better with? Um, subscribe if you're willing. And if you really, really, I'm super grateful for that. Thanks again, guys. See you later.